Okay, welcome back. Second half of the day, we got uh, uh, our homework to look at this afternoon. And I had two questions that were lingering over from this morning. I just kind of want to get them off my plate so we wouldn't have to wait until next week. So we're going to ask these two questions real quickly, and then we'll move on to the, uh, to the homework assignment. The first question, I think, was from Sharon. She asked about printing from Adobe. Uh, Adobe, uh, of course, Adobe, the Adobe application that you use on, on your desktop, you, you can print from there if you are printing to your own computer or to your own printer. Uh, let's see if I can pull up the screen and show that to you. Uh, let's share a screen here. Bob. Go right ahead. have a question regarding printers okay my um laptop will not print to my epson it did when i first got it but now it stopped for uh, some you, reason you may have to go and download some drivers for it uh because they do an update from time to time on those printers especially with a mac there's a you get, <laughs> you get these software updates and if you, go in, if you got a mac com uh, computer Sometimes the old drivers are disabled, and you just have to go in and update them and what have you. Oh well, I'm I'm out I'm out of memory, so I can't. I, don't have I haven't forgotten memory. about you, Callie. I'll still get back with you on that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm waiting. Oh, okay, but I haven't forgotten about you. But we'll, I'll be glad to help you with that. All yeah, right. when when you have the time. Yeah, well, it got kind of complicated this week a little bit there, so I wasn't able to get back to you. I think we started this process mm -hmm. last week. So, but uh, got a little bit complicated, but I still got you on my list. I haven't checked you off yet. Okay. So, all right. So uh, if you are printing, uh, if you're trying to print from your desktop application, what I've got up is, uh, uh, is a, uh, uh, the Adobe uh, application that's on your desktop. This is uh, Lightroom Classic on your desktop. You can print to your own computer I mean, to your own computer, to your own desktop local printer. You can print to that if you want to go through and set it up. Uh, and I think the question she was asking, can you print to an outside source from there? And the answer to that is no. Uh, you'd have to open up PPR, the Rose application, upload your photos and let them print from that. And then there was another question. Uh, the other side of that was, was uh, can you print from the Adobe Cloud function? Say, for an example, up on Adobe Cloud. And I went out and kind of did some research on that. And the answer to that is no as well. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, here it is here. It says, uh, and this is from Scott Kelvin. He's kind of a guru, if you would, uh, on that. So the answer is going to be no and no. You can't do either. Uh, but he, he went through and looked at that. Well, there's looked at that question from seminars he was having. So he says, I had to give the, why, uh, where are these features located in Lightroom? People were asking the question. How can I print from the Lightroom cloud to a, 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 a courier or a service provider such as PPR or Walgreens or whomever you want to use, SAMs or what have you? And he says there's no uh, print module in cloud. Uh, so the answer to both questions is no, you can't print from your application on your desktop out to another service provider unless you upload the photo from the desktop, put it in a folder, and then upload it to their Rose system. And no, you can't do it from the Lightroom cloud either going directly. Uh, Adobe is kind of um, picky about who they, they allow to interface into their systems. And when you start printing to another third party, you got, you're opening up your systems for possible bugs or malware or what have you. So they don't allow you to do that at all. So, so the answer to both, both questions is no and no, can't do it. Uh, but you can still do it with PPR. And you, the way you do it with PPR now is, is the way you, it would normally be done. Uh, you put it in a folder, upload it to PPR Picks, again, which is Rose, app, Rose Application, R-O-E-S, which stands for Remote, Remote Order Entry System. And that way you can get into their systems. I'm sure they've got some uh, security features on their end too, to, to keep things from uh, for keep from getting malware into their system as well, but that's the only way you can do it. So no, you can't print from uh, so, Lightroom Cl Classic or Adobe Cloud. So uh, they have um, a blurb. We can order a book off of Adobe, and 
with using blurb, but yeah, no yeah. printing. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, not crazy, but that's, I'm just looking for a, another means to get my work printed and also know that 99% of the time I'm going to be pleased with the print. Yeah. Well, yeah. even with, with uh, Adobe uh, or with Lightroom, you can upload. No, it's not Lightroom. It's, uh, it's in design. Blurb has an, has an application that will allow you to interface with a package Yeah. on, uh, on uh, uh, in the app. I think it's called, what is it called? Bookwrite or something like that. I think it was Bookwrite. Or you can use, I use InDesign for our books. And I'm, a, I'm allowed to do my work in a program called InDesign, not, uh, and it's Adobe's InDesign program, but there's an interface in there, I forget what it's called, but it allows me to upload it to, uh, to the Blurb application. But that's the only place I know that you can do actually printing from your, from your desktop uh, to do that, to, to, to uh, use a print application, so to speak. Well, it's appreciated. Thank you for your time. Yeah, so that's what we do. Print from a so we got that. Then the other question, I don't know if Gwen is back yet or not. <clears throat> uh, but what I did uh, during the break, I'm here. Yeah, was to go out and go into. I went out and uh, went into my menu on uh, low. Uh, mine starts at 100 from an ISO standpoint. Then it goes to low 0.07, low 0.03, low one, or something like that. And I got the camera to look at it real quick. Right about. Yeah. So I can tell you exactly what it means. Uh, sensitivity session is low one. That's the lowest one. Low seven, 0.07, or 0.7 actually. And then a 0.3. And then low one. One. one and then that's 0.7, and then a three. Okay, and then, then it goes to 100. Okay. So, uh, and th what you're looking at on the screen, I just went out and took a picture. And these are black screens because I wasn't looking to take a picture. I just wanted to use the application to get the uh, ISO reading. So at low one, at low three, it's going to be ISO 80. Oh. Okay. And okay. then at uh, low... Uh, three at low seven is going to be ISO 64. Okay. And then at low one is going to be ISO 50. So you got 80, 64, and 50. Those are your ISO settings. And it doesn't matter that you don't have an image in the frame. It just matters what, how they record the data. And I've got an 85 on here, shot at F4, 1, 500 of a second. And this is my three brackets. So I took the first frame. Let's see if the second frame will change it. No, it still stays at ISA 50. 50. Yeah. So you're, so if you've got a uh, camera that goes at, stops at 100 is your last number. The next number would be 80. That's uh, low three. Uh, the next number would be 64. That's seven. And the next number will be 50, ISO 50, and that's one. But that's how you would do it. Just go ahead and take a picture with that at that uh, setting and run it through Lightroom, and it'll tell you what actual ISO was. Um, that brings another question. I'm sorry, um, Gwen. But um, those settings like 65, 64, um, 45, is that like the film um, processing back with AGFA and um, so forth? Is that why those are? For black and white, um, for the sharpness, what are those? No, no, that's just image quality, and they just they base it off film settings back in the old days. Okay. It was ASA, mm -hmm. American Standards Association, and then when they went international with it, it became ISO, International Standards Organization. So ASA for American Standards Association, <laughs> and then ISO for International Standards Organization. Uh, and it does go back to the old film days, how they rated film, and they just yeah. carried that over into your sensor ratings. Mm -hmm. So 50 would be a speed of a film, and it could be uh, it could be Fuji, it could be Agfa. They had different film ratings. Uh, Kodachrome, Kodak was big in the film at the time. They had a Kodak, a Kodachrome 64. Uh, and then they had a Coder Color, which was an uh, IS, uh, which was an ASA of 80, and then they had a Coder Color 100. And et cetera. So that's how the rate, that's how those speeds came into play. Uh, and nowadays, there's uh, there's no films that are rated, but a, a film, if you buy a film, it'll have one of those ratings on it. It'll tell you what the sensitivity of it is to light. 
re relative to one of those numbers. ISO 200, they had a 400 film, yeah. which was tri triax. They had a, and that was usually the fastest one they had when you look at film. Then you could push triax up to about 1600 or something like that. But that's how you would find out. So now that uh, I know that I'll, I'll make a little note on my particular camera, what that is. It goes from 180, 64 to 50, and it's going down. Of course, the lower you get, the better the quality is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But optimum ISO, or what they call native resolution on a camera, is typically one stop under, or one, one stop under the last number that you can read. So the best ISO for a D4 would be ISO, would be low three, which is ISO 80, not 100. If you're looking for optimal quality and uh, uh -huh. look at, uh, lenses have an optimum aperture uh, and cameras have an optimum, uh, an optimum um, ISO quality. This might be something we could add to the cheat sheet. Uh, now, every camera will be different uh, because it's uh, the last number that you can read, such in, in the case of the D4, because 100 is the last number to have. The mm -hmm. next number is a 0 0.3, 0 0.7, a 0.1. Uh, those would be the lowest you that. could go, but the optimum would be one number below the last number that you could read. One ISO setting, one stop below the last ISO that you could read. So in this case, ISO 100 for D4, the next number down would be the best image quality you can get uh, out of that camera <laughs> at ISO, would be at ISO 80. Wow. So, so, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is for all cameras, but that's the D4. It'd be different. And it'll knock off. they got different sensors on them is what they have in them. So the sensors will be different. Darren, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say my 750, Nikon 750 setup, I, 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 I ISO the same way. It does? Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. I have 100, then go down to 3, 7, and then 1. Yeah. So if you got 100 in the next, and it goes 3, 7, 1, then the notes, those next three positions are 80, 64, and 50. Yeah, you know, I had also set up on mine, but I had, I had a guy and took the shot to see what, you know, what was six four or whatever. Yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, okay, there you go. Now, it's a good, very thoughtful question, and thanks for bringing it up. Thank you. Okay. So. <clears throat> well, Canon only goes to 70. I mean, 100, excuse me. <laughs> now, it depends on the camera. Uh, not, not you can't blanketly say that about the Canon because uh, uh, well, I, I'm only speaking of the one I have. It only yeah, goes okay, to yeah. 100. Yeah, okay. So you might go to another Canon product or another Nikon product. It'd be totally different. And it's based on a sensor of the same camera. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is. Uh, let me stop the share here. Get that off the screen. Yes, I want to quit that. And where do I need to be? Okay. All right, this is homework. Uh, we got a few pieces of homework. When I say a few pieces, uh, fairly decent participation. And we're going to go into homework at this point. If there's no other questions about anything we covered this morning. Are there questions that we have from this morning? Uh, anything at all? Okay. All right, let's go into the homework. Uh, where am I? Let me pull bridge up. Uh, I got a, a question over the break regarding homework uh, due to some extenuating circumstances. One of uh, our classmates has to lead, so they asked if I would do their uh, their homework first, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I said I would do that. Uh, Gwen's got not Gwen, but uh, Flo's got to get out of here fairly quickly. She's got some issues she's, she's dealing with. So Flo, I'll start off with Flo, and then I'll start off the top and go right through the rest of them if you would. So just letting the class know what we are actually doing as we do this. So I'll start to share and we'll open up uh, open up Bridge, and that's not Flo there. Where is it? Here we go. This is Flo here. Okay, uh, I, Flo, did you send me a a write up or anything about this at all? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and I just I, I just asked if you could get to me before uh, two o'clock. So, uh, but I do appreciate you getting to me because yeah. I got to take my car to the Honda dealership. Okay, no problem there. Uh, I, I'm, I may have misplaced your write up. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, let me see if I can find mine. You've got it. Uh, just bring it up and we can talk through it if you would. 
Oh, but this is slow. Nice image. Uh, and I sent you a note back as well. Uh, yeah. This, this capture. So tell us what you're doing. I mean, of course, I mean, we're going to talk about uh, is it take, make, or create? Uh, let, let me see if I can find So, it. yeah, title is Many Lanterns. Okay. And I said the rule of odds or patterns and textures, possibly the Fibonacci spiral flipped the other way. I couldn't figure out how to flip it okay. in Photoshop. Okay. All right. So if you're going to flip it, it would go, you're going to go around this way with it and you're going to culminate somewhere in here with the flip. Well, no, the other way, actually. The other, that way and then culminate here? Oh, no. <laughs> culminate on the light, the lighter lantern. That one. Uh-huh. Oh, I wouldn't call Fibonacci that way then. I would, if you were to flip the Fibonacci and go this way, it's going to culminate on this image right in here somewhere. Would that make it a Fibonacci? It it'll, would be it'll be closer than going the other route. Oh, okay. So this way, because Fibonacci comes around like that and it comes uh -huh. in. So your point will be somewhere in there if uh -huh. you came from that way. But I, you uh -huh. can actually do it that way and get closer into some of this action that's happening here. So, right. but what was the other? I like patterns and textures. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got some leading, uh, leading lines. You've got some lines that are bouncing around that goes mm -hmm. up. That's kind of nice here. Mm -hmm. But go ahead with uh, the rest of what you were saying. Let's see if I uh, Well, the aspect ratio was two to three, PPI 30. I said make. Uh, in basic, I increased the blacks all the way. Because when I tried to select, it kept going into the lanterns. So anyway, by, and basically by, by taking the blacks all the way black, that made it, it didn't, it didn't pick up into the lantern. Uh, the black portion here is changing the background. So mm -hmm. were you able to see anything behind that prior to... Uh, doing something with the black point. The yeah, it was wires, and it was it was a furniture store. Oh, okay. And those were, and it had tags and stuff hanging off of it, and you could see the ceiling, the ceiling, and some other yeah. stuff. You know, other stuff in the background. But when I took the blacks all the way down in basic, that seemed to solve the problem. Yeah, that's more that's of a create, if you would. Okay. It's more of a create because what you're doing is presenting an image that was not. In the original photograph, you see wires uh -huh. back there. Something like okay. a scalp replacement, you just replace it with black. Okay. Yeah, and and it worked well. I mean, I really liked the way it kind of played out. It worked very well. But, but that's more of a create there, if you would. And, oh, uh, thank you. Okay. And so, then I had to rotate it because the, the, they were not straight. Okay. And then I used the rectangle marquee tool to select, and then I cropped use the clone tool to do further black out the background and everything. Um, I tried to, well, I, I dodged the ladder, lanterns to bring out the light, but I got more light out of the lanterns when I did adjustments uh, from the file menu to increase the brightness of the lanterns. So nice image, nice capture, so beautiful image, nice still life, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely creative. So, uh, and this little extra rim you got around it, the little extra, extra accent piece here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's kind of, that kind of sets it off as well. A very nice piece of work. Oh, thank you very much. Very nice here. Okay. Any questions to flow regarding that? And you guys see how we got from make to create? Uh, had she just left all the wires and stuff hanging in the back? Uh, and uh, adjusting it, twisting it, uh, straightening it out. That's all part of the make process. Uh, but with the, with the wires in the background, taking the background all the way down to black is actually creating something that wasn't in the original image. So that's how we got to create. Right. And I also took out another lantern, which was behind the lantern to the right, and you could still see it. So I took that one out. And you using the clone stamp for that as well? Huh? Clone stamp? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I did. Creative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. It has a nice feel to it. Nice piece of rhythm. Mm -hmm. Bounce, bouncing it up and out. I like that. Bounce, bounce, bounce it up and out. That's kind of nice. Nice piece of work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any questions of flow, if you would, regarding that? Looks very nice. Yep. Okay. Thank um, you. Not even questions, but comments. Have you want to make it? What have you on it? I think yeah, it's a right. good piece of work. 
Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank give you. it up on this DSLR. He's still using cell phones. Huh? <laughs> Felix says, give it up on this DSLR. He's still using cell phones. That's right. <laughs> no, I love my little Canon 70D. I not <laughs> and I think up. Bob, I not only gave up on my DSLR, I got it sold. I sold all my equipment. Oh, oh my God. God. Really? 900 bucks I got for everything, and I call it junk. That's oh drastic. God, that is drastic. Oh, it is but drastic. <laughs> so you're in this class or what? <laughs> no, and you know what? The, I think the lens was my 18 to that was Felix. Oh. That was a question to Felix there. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Oh. Was what so, did you say, Bob? Are you so you're going to stop taking this class at this point? Ain't no way. You st you still <laughs> gear. So. You cannot get rid of me if you wanted to. Felix is going to a midlife crisis. <laughs> Somebody said the cell phone class on like Wednesday. That's right. Remember, Sharon came in with the cell phone and she upgraded. <laughs> Five cameras later, I sure did. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, can, I can go backwards, Sharon. Wow. Hey, Felix, you, you made out easy. I got the beat down when I came into class with my cell phone. I, I, had, I, got, I had 1,600 <laughs> images, and Bob was like, Whoa, you really you guys with you. shoot with that thing. I'm like, Go, <laughs> <laughs> <So>, Felix. <laughs> So you guys still see the screen okay? Because I've done a few things. Here. Thanks, just, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I was just going to say, and I took it with my seven, well, let me see, my 18 to 200, uh, which is, what do you call the lesser lenses? Anyway, I, you know, and it's, the, it's the least expensive lens I have that I got used, that I, that I bought used and I used all the time. Yeah, so anyway. uh, it's uh, 18 to 200. Now, uh, just a uh, quick note, uh -huh. most of the lenses that they make are, are sharp. Uh, there's no such thing as a better lens. It's, they're, they're built heavier and they're built more robust to take more of a punishment and fill. But most of your lens manufacturers are sharp. Uh, and there's an optimum aperture. Say if you use a kit lens or a consumer level lens, you still want to go for the, uh, the best spot in the, in the lens. And then this particular one looks like you're shooting by the F9. And that puts you mm -hmm. on what's typically F8, the sharpest area of the lens uh, for that particular lens. But uh, you don't find a, a bad lens anymore. And you to find them. Okay. Uh, uh, most of them are fairly sharp if you can get to the optimum aperture of the lens. Yeah. Uh, okay. And when you start shooting wide open, you'll start to see where that lens is not really that good at all. And then this image looks pretty good all across the all across the frame. I don't see any issues with it at all. Uh, and that that aperture shouldn't be any issues with it. Okay. Okay. All well, right. Thanks so a nice lot. Piece of work and, Very uh, good. Well, oh, thank, thank, thank you. Color. Thank you. Like like Y'all pray that they don't charge me an arm and a leg for this car stuff. So see you later. Have a great weekend. Okay. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Take care. Good luck. Uh, All right, thank um, you. All right. Let's roll to the top. We're going to start with Annie. Annie AJ. She's got an old country barn, she calls it. Spec ratio is 3.2. Resolution is 300. Rule for an inch is in depth plus framing. The image was a create improvements. You did basic improvements in Lightroom. Photoshop changed the scale. Uh, removes raw objects from the foreground with the content aware tool. Transferred image to net collection. Uh, Vesa enhanced moves some colors. <clears throat> Increase the contrast structure to show more tech in the building. It sounds like definitely like a create. Transferred image back to Photoshop Lightroom Topaz Studios. Topaz Studios used a dramatic HDR filter transfer back to Lightroom. Detailed notes. Thanks, Annie. Mm -hmm. uh, and frame and transfer an image out the original file uploaded to the cloud. So let's look at the image that's coming up next. Okay, here we go. All right, uh, right off the top, I see the sky replacement. Uh, uh, nice uh, this, uh, work in terms of getting it to work in that small an area and not to get the bleed over and what have you. Uh, this is a really interesting structure and with the whole car in the, in the back, in the in the garage, I guess. I've saw uh, interesting structure there. Uh, but you want to talk about it a little bit, Anne? I'll let you, uh, you said, and it's definitely create based on all the things that you've done. Uh, but go ahead and talk about it a little bit if you want. Tell us what you did, how you did it. Again, I just read through it and I may have read oh. through it a little quickly. 
Well, um, it's something that I probably take, <laughs> I take a picture of every time I pass by, but um, I was in the car and um, I was, <laughs> I, I know you said I should have gotten closer, but I was just riding by and it's along this uh, country road, cars keep coming by and uh, it's in an area that um, <laughs> I just don't want to be alone in, so I don't get too far <laughs> from my car when I do stop. So in this particular image here, it was, like I said, as I was riding by because it's on the, what, that side of the road. Okay. But okay. it's a barn. It's a big old barn with, I don't know, I guess they keep feed on the other side. It's like a whole big structure that this is the older part, the other part is uh, what they call them, silos or what have you. I don't yeah, know. What silos, do. yes. And the silos, little round things, uh, silos. Right, but I was interested in the car. And I did, you said I should have turned it black and white. Now, initially, I did turn it black and white, but inside, because, you know, that's, it's inside and it was a very sunny day, it was real dark. Yeah. And, and when I turned it black and white, it was con con it was totally dark. Yeah. So, and when I put the filter on it, it kind of lightened it up so you can see the car a little bit. But next time I go through there, and it's, if anybody ever go down 75 when they're going to, if you go, if you get off, and I don't remember the exit, to Lane where you can buy peaches or pecans or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's been sitting there for years, and that old car is still there. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. I mean, just the structure, the age of it, and the whole bit. Uh, I kind of zeroed in on this door here. Uh, I like that you know, a, that section there where it's kind of rawed out and dilapidated and uh, yes. what's going on. That make an interesting black and white study. Yeah. Uh, along with the car itself, that make an interesting study by itself. Um, yeah. uh, and I I'll, and I did wonder why didn't you get a little closer with it? But now that you explained it, uh, but it's nice nice capture. Uh, I don't know what these are doors up here, but it's old structure, very nicely. Uh, nice, old. nice capture. So nice I mean, it's, it's, it begs to do some more work. Uh, and again, I don't know if it's on private property whether you, and whether it's safe to go on the property too, but this is intriguing here like that, the doorway yeah. there. I'd like to get a shot of that, Russ. Yeah, Black and white. Car itself is good. The car itself is good as well. And I understand your difficulty if you were tri tri uh, turning this to black and white and your tonal range will reduce. In color, it separates fairly easy. Uh, and the challenge of black and white is to have all these tones reproduced well where you can see into it like you're seeing into it here. But nice capture, AJ. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. Real Did interest. You uh, and Did you say they, um, they say peaches and guns? <laughs> no. <laughs> Pecans. Yeah. Big pounds, yeah. Oh, okay. It depends on where you Yeah, go. you know, lanes. You, you see those big signs that say, go, as you go down there like three miles and it's on the right hand side. Yeah. Yeah. Where is that? Is that going south? Yes. Yeah, south 75, yeah. And it's definitely a create based on all the stuff she mentioned. Uh, it looks like it might fall to the mate category, but uh, based on the stuff she's mentioning, it's a lot of stuff. Change the sky, remove several objects out of the foreground, the contour to the transformation in the collection. Yeah, definitely create. It's not all that was there. Nice piece of work, AJ, as usual. Good. Thank you. Good eye, good eye. Thank you. And uh, this is from Barrington. This is my heart last I've passed. Beauty nature, take them at 100 to 250, one into light room. Pixels per inch, I guess. It's thing. Okay, here's the image here. Okay, uh, this is from Barrington. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a nice capture, some good detail. Uh, didn't look at the metadata. You want to tell us about this? Is take, make, or create? Where are you with this? That's a take. Okay, basically take them. Uh, I agree with you on that. You want to call a rule in play? What would you use for rule? Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to help them with that? I said fill the frame. Fill the frame. Yeah, very close to fill the yeah, frame. Fill the frame. Yeah. Fill the frame. Yeah, that's what. Uh, uh, and it could get even closer and be more uh, in terms of filling the frame as well. Uh, uh, I was just, I, I was just trying to get put my foot on top on on the bumper of the bus, the back of it. Bumper of the bus. I lost you. No, I, you know, this, this, this frame here is something that 
I've been I've been trying and been aiming to do for a very long time. Your buddy's mad. And, oh, you're mad at him. What you're trying to do? Okay. <laughs> Um, yes. Yeah. Under camp us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we we lose that address. Like what he said is he's just, he's just trying to get in the ballpark of doing what you guys have been doing all along, and that's with the matting and framing. Thank you very much, Barrington, uh, for that. Uh, and that's something uh, all of us may or may ha not have issues with from time to time is how to put a mat and a frame around something, and that's of course is done in Photoshop. And that may be something we want to walk through uh, and just to show people how to do it again. But that may be some, uh, one of those questions there. But build a frame, and this is definitely a take. That's what we've got. And uh, so any questions to Barrington uh, regarding it, regarding the image? Okay. Uh, if I had to offer up a suggestion or two, I'd say try to, uh, try to uh, tone down your background. Uh, and you already got attention Hi. on the flower itself. I mean, what I don't know what this is. But that flower, but you can tone down the backgrounds a little bit because there's a piece I hear that's kind of calling my attention, and there's some things over here. But and that's that calls for just you could drop a control point in there, like in Viveza, and just darken that area. Or you could in Photoshop, you could uh, not Photoshop, but Lightroom, uh, you could invert select subject and inverse that and then darken this down as well. But uh, if, you, if you're going to call attention to the flower itself, these things around it should be way out of focus or toned down so that you don't really recognize them if we're talking about just the flower. I think that was the main subject, just the flower in that case here. All right, questions to Barrington, if you would, anyone? Okay, let's go to the next one then. All right, I'm just going, as we go through this, this is from Billy Richards. This is a take, he says, 300 PPI, rule of thirds, theme of snapshot, barn at dusk. Uh, I remember seeing this one come in. Uh, Can 5D Mark IV, 24 to 105. I guess that's 24 to 105. Is that what you're using, Billy? Uh, I see yeah. 160. A shot at 105, F11, 100 or a second. Process and light, remove flare, mat it, PS in Photoshop. Here we go. Let's see what we've got here. And this is the image here. Uh, this is uh, it's kind of an ethereal looking image, and I offer that up uh, just to kind of get discussion started. You typically don't see blown out portions of an image like this, but in this case with the flare that's it coming out, it, it definitely works. It definitely works is what it do does too. I thought, wow, yeah, it works. So, uh, and I've seen this, I saw a similar image that uh, I think Sharon did a while back of some things. Uh, but this, this is Etna's barn. Etna's barn, okay. <laughs> yeah, Etna's barn on uh, Klondike. Me and some of the guys oh, went out and yet. we took some pictures of it. Yeah, and uh -huh. uh, sometimes I like to take a picture of something that is real at that particular moment, something that you can't duplicate, you know. Yeah. I know what you said last week about, you know, the brightness. Yep, yep. But... Uh, you know, because the sun was going down and I saw this like it is, you know, that's the reason I took the picture because uh, I figured even though if you went out there every day, there's a possibility you won't be able to duplicate that. That's yeah. true. So, I agree with you. Well, yeah, that's when I first saw it, I thought this actually works. And there's a rule basically says you don't have blown out areas in your frame. But when I first looked at this, I thought it was a giant sun. I'm like, what planet are you on? I looked at it. And then I saw the saw the airplane flying across. I said, oh, okay, this is still planet Earth. But I, I'm being uh, trying to be humorous, if you would. Uh, but I do know the Okay, planet. Bob. Okay. <laughs> but you see, uh, you see the people standing down in front of the barn? Yeah, they were kind of irrelevant to me. But yeah, I see them now that you mentioned that. I didn't look that deep into before. Because when I say when you first look at this, this is where your eye goes. It goes right up here. So yeah, I took a I took a lot of pictures over there, and uh, but I figure me and the guys uh, would probably have some of the same pictures, but I figure nobody took this one. No, so nobody took this one in other than you, not at all. So and it's a uh, strong back lit. Uh, you can look at the the, the uh, foliage in the foreground uh, is highlighted, and there's a figure here. Uh, down in the corner there. You can see the rim light around the person's head, rim light around the things here. Now, did you put a vignette around this? The corners are a little bit dark. Nope. I okay. did very, 
some of the basic adjustments. I didn't do um, a whole lot of a lot of adjustment. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's a workable image. It definitely works. Okay. So, uh, Billy Richards, copyright on there, what have you. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. Hey, Bob. This is, yeah, it's definitely a take. Uh, go ahead, uh, Theron. If that's, you will. that's Marsha Barn, too. That's, yeah, I know the same one Marsha Marcia did. Yeah, Marsha yeah, did this from a, from a distance, is what he did. Yeah. But this different angle late in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let me let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. uh, I had some uh, what you would call lens flares. That was, uh, um, I guess, the sun bouncing off the front of my lens, and I removed them. Would that make it a make or just still remain as a take? Uh, you've done some make work when you clean up like that. So it could be, it's going to vacillate between take or make. You did say take, and it looks like you haven't changed much other than you improved it a little bit. So that it could, it could be, you could argue it's a make because you changed something. I didn't see the original image, but uh, it, could, it could qualify as a, as a make because you're doing stuff uh, to improve the image, but you're not changing the image. So take or make, but take will work as well. So you Thanks. Know, Okay, nice capture. Uh, very ethereal looking. Like I said, this this looks like a giant sun to me. Boy, this mm. just that's yeah. the first thing I thought also. Yeah. A giant sun. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I've never seen the sun look like that. Normally you got this little blowout, this little spot in the very middle. You got tonal range all around it. But it looks like a giant sun. Uh, it's work. Nice creativity. Every once in a while that happens and you you just, like you say, you saw the shot and you took it and that's good. So you got a, you got a, what they call money shot. So I have a question. This is Donna Billy. What what are those little white dots in the foreground near the bottom? It looks like water. Uh, do you know what that is? No, it was weeds. Yeah, weeds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, weeds. Okay. Looks like, looks like okay. weeds. Uh, weeds with highlights on them. No, oh. Those are they, they, those are grass. They're yeah. wild grass. Okay. Sometimes they'll have some little fuzzy tips that pop up on them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. And since right. you got the light coming in from the back, they're kind of illuminated. Uh, a lot like this hair on this person's head right here, you see the same type of thing. When you get, uh, it could be like little flowers here. Well, I don't know if they're flowers or not, but they're highlighted by okay. on the back lighting there. He looked like he sprayed his, his, his lens at the bottom with water. <laughs> But <laughs> I just need a clarification on that one. Okay, Donna. <laughs> okay, Billy. We still friends. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, going to the next semester. Let's see if I can let this go. And this is from Cali Dax Train. Uh, lighting process, Photoshop framing, aspect ratio 812, 300 PPI, foreground interest in depth, lighting wheel, sky replacement. And here it goes. It's called Jack Train. Okay. All right. This is from Cali. Cali, you there? I see your sky replacement. Yes. Okay. Make, make or create. Well, I guess since I made a change uh, uh, with the sky replacement, uh, it's a uh, create. Yeah, it's definitely create. And you don't guess. You should know that. Yes, it's a create. <laughs> I mean, at the minimum, if you well, you know the that that was okay. Freudian slip it was a create. Yeah, at the bare <laughs> minimum, you, you, it's create. Uh, now it's called Jack's train. Why do you call it Jack's train? I don't know. I guess because I thought I saw a conductor in there, but uh, he didn't show up on my picture, so. Okay, you duck down I just the picture. All right, what rule are you going to employ here? Rule. I said uh, foreground, uh, foreground interest and depth. Mm, you could call that, but I think your rule is going to be more like leading lines. Leading lines. Yeah, you got your train moving in this direction, coming uh, through the frame out here. And the rule thing does that as well. It's more like leading lines. You could also apply a rule of thirds based on where the, uh, where the train is positioned in the frame. Uh, but either one of those, but not for it. And, and again, I see where you're getting foreground inches in depth uh, because you got this rail, you got that. And you yeah, got yeah. background. I mean, that's one of those rules as well. Uh, okay. So I'm um, like, and I mentioned earlier, going forward, try to look for the dominant rules. And in this case, the dominant rule here is uh, leading lines. You could also use right to left if you want to call that your dominant rule. It's moving across the frame here. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? 
Uh, left to right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I see them all, but okay. okay. I, I thought I chose the best yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, but that's where we got to get better at. And I, I think we're doing that as we learn the rules. These things are, uh, and if we limit, if we, uh, if we start limiting them to like the best three or the top three, then maybe we'll be able to narrow it down as opposed to say letting us use eight or nine. Sometimes a photograph may have multiple and sometimes it's more than four or five or six or seven. We had one photograph we looked at when we first started doing this, had about uh, 14 of the 21 in it. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it will always say dominant rule. And the dominant rule here is going to be leading lines, or you could chose left to right, left to right. Okay. Uh, uh, one of those would have been okay as well. Okay, questions to Callie. Uh, definitely create with the sky replacement. Uh, anyone to Callie, questions? Okay, all right, let's go forward. That's a really nice choice of sky for that photo, Callie. Jack's tree. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, this is uh, from Carol, True Life. It's a thing, composition rule, different point of view or point of view. Build a frame, basic process in Lightroom, Photoshop. Try to do a scar base, but we'll do it. Uh, size image, and we got this. Okay, yeah. Good capture, wow. nice sharp image. Uh, and take, make, or create, Carol, in this case. Uh, actually, this is a take. Okay, and the rule you're going to employ. This... Um... Uh, point of view. Point of view, and those are those are what we're looking for as well. So nice image. It's almost abstract, and you. Yeah, I try. I, I thought it might look good in black and white, but when I couldn't get it into silver effects, I just you know kind of previewed it in Lightroom in black and white, and I wasn't. It wasn't that interesting. It didn't. Exactly. It didn't have strong contrast. So. Yeah, it's I, well, well, well as a color shot. You got some colors work together. You got your blue greens and the yellows. Oh, they all work well together. Yeah, the the person who carved this is just so intricate. I just found that to be very interesting itself. You know, you you, you got all these animals carved into this tree. Yeah, very nice piece of very nice catch. Nice clean, nice, nice. And and I did that with a cell phone, and I have not. Oh my DSLR camera. <laughs> I just happened to be in uh, this park and I wasn't going to carry a big camera, but I did this with my cell phone. So. And I got cell phones are not bad. I mean, we, we knock them all the time. Uh, but if the marketing people had their, say, their, 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 uh, had their will over you, you'd be using cell phones for everything. Yeah. Carol, yeah. is that Disney? Yeah, yeah. Wild Kingdom. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, I was about to ask you where it was too. Yeah. Wild King Kingdom, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, nice that, that tree just took it, it just captured my uh, my not my imagination, but my attention. Because yeah. it's so intricate. Yeah. A very nice capture. The colors work well. And this shadow area here could be opened up a little bit, but the colors work well. It bound as well in point of view. And uh, one of the things we were discussing in the uh, our, you know, uh, conversation was it wouldn't do a sky replacement. And in, yes. this case, in this case, sky replacement, the artificial intelligence in a sky replacement looks for a level image. It looks for a horizon line. And you really can't tell where the horizon line is based on this image. Uh, it's maybe down here somewhere, maybe even down here. So AI could not pick that up. So that's probably what do a sky replacement. Yeah, it wouldn't do a sky replacement. So yeah. Yeah. But that I looks nice. I, huh? I, don't, I don't think I would try it. I like the blue background. That was very well. That blue so, background looks real nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Putting, putting clouds back there might hinder or what have you. But nice capture, nice and sharp. Uh, and again, we, we had an article, I think, in um, in the team room of, about the cell phone, how it captures images. And it uses a form of artificial intelligence as well. Cell phones basically look at an image and will capture segments. So it might be one area here that it kind of captures, then it goes up here and captures some other pieces, and then it stitches all that together. So you get the impression of sharpness all the way through versus uh, is in depth to fill how cell phones basically work nowadays. But nice image. Any questions to Kath? Uh, to, uh, what, what was the rule again? Rule, point of view. Point of view. She's looking up at 
Are you looking okay. up at this or down? No, I'm looking up. Totally up. Yeah. Okay. But I, okay. I, I guess my understanding of uh, point of view is uh, looking up. Everybody looks up at it because that makes that a point of view. Yeah, point of view is your warm side. If you think about what an image would look like if it were warm to crawl out of a hole and look at it, that's looking almost directly up. And that's one piece of the point of view. The other piece of it is looking down on nothing. If you're bird flying okay. over, those constitute okay. your two points of view. And as Jerry had too, is he up? You're either looking straight up, you're looking straight down from a previous Okay. Standpoint. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. Nice capture. Nice piece of work. Thank um, you. Go to the yes, next. This is, this is from who is this from? This is from Cynthia. This is from I have to, I'm sorry, let me back out and say this is uh Clarence. He's not here today. Uh he had something to take off today. I remember the image coming in, but this is from Clarence. Like I said, I, I thought it was a nice capture. I love I love the color usage. Could have done something in Baveza. To brighten these up, the yellows and blues and green they all work together. And uh, but this is from Al Gals uh, in this afternoon, so he had another appointment he had to make, so we won't spend a whole lot of time on it. But uh, any questions about this as we look at it quickly? That's a nice photograph. Yeah, Simplicity. Nice photograph. Yeah, very nice. Would you call that uh, color combination? I would say particular colors that work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what I think I would do if I did anything with this is go in here and enhance these greens here. A little bring them out a little bit more, uh, but I like the yellows against the green. I like the blue against the yellow in the background. <clears throat> so, uh, and it looks like these are flowers that may be on focus. This is a, uh, maybe maybe some nice bokeh if you want. Let's see what we got here. Four point five using a twenty eight to two hundred and shot it at eighty two. You know, even have some bokeh in the background as well. Uh, but nice simple composition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. This is from Cynthia. Uh, three hundred people. AR three two capture theme title abandon sky replacement three images HDR capture. She's going to create Lightroom process three images create one HDR image basic Lightroom processing Photoshop sky replacement auto tones curves. Uh, Cynthia, I want to ask you about uh, auto tones and curves. How are you using that? So be thinking about that when we get to the image. Uh, Viveza control points tone down the highlights, and you move this around a little bit and bring out just the red, just a little bit on the car, just a little more car Photoshop sizing, canvas watermarks in the cloud. But here's the image here is what she's got. This is okay. nice. Yeah, I remember the car. Well, yeah. in October, uh, Jerry and I we went back to Kershaw, and the weeds have really grown around the car. And this time, instead of uh, I think the last time I just did the car. I moved back and to get some of the house into my image. Yeah, this so, is this is what nice I did. Image. This image there, uh, more I look at the better I like it. And this is just a personal, uh, an editorial, if you would, yeah. that just came out of my head. Uh, but detail heard... around it, uh -huh. uh, it's detail around it with the trees, the shrub. This thing is sharp all the way through. And to be able to discern the building in the background and the car in the foreground, then you don't lose those with the, the amount of details you got going there on with it. How are you using tone curve? I haven't used tone curve in a while. I'm familiar with what it, how it's supposed to work, but how are you using that to bring out? Well, I, I use, <clears throat> you know, you taught us about uh, color, you know, the color. Yeah. If it's warm, you can use the color. Uh, but uh, sometimes when you do the color, it may turn it pink or blue. Yeah. So yeah. And what I did was I went, instead of doing auto color, I did auto tone. Auto -tone. And then once I did auto tone and I got the car, everything the way I wanted, I went into curves. And in yeah. curves, you can move that little point to make it a little darker or a little lighter. Right. And I just... Mm, just to give it just just that oh. yeah there you go nice piece of work this is, I, I would, this is a portfolio piece i'd say this is a good piece of work uh and I'll, and the reason i say it is look at the detail i like the sense here the red on the stem on these blades of grass that are growing up and how, how they're not lost you got good shadow detail it looks like some debris or trash here that's uh, that's part of the scene yeah uh, this looks like a piece of a, a fence or something and this red, these red bulbs here uh, off of this plant, it's extremely sharp all through. 
It's nice. And then you did a scour replacement, you say? As I well? did a scour replacement because it was just blue. And it just, when I put that sky with the little of uh, the white clouds going through, I said, yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah, nice touch. Nice, very nice touch. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, that does not look great in black and white, I'm telling you. So sometimes. Uh, yeah, so I was getting out of that. You can't do this in black and white. You yeah. have a of colors there. Yeah. So we take that, that uh, tag on off of there because uh, that kind of pulls it away from the image. This is an excellent image. Okay. I like it a lot. Yeah, very nice. Nice done. Very Thank nice. you. Right, very nice. Make, make very nice. Paper. Very nice. Real <laughs> sharp. Good job. I love the sharpness of it. Okay, now what's and the I did not do it with the cell phone, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. All right, so what's the rule we're employing? If you want to well, the that? rule I said is foreground, middle ground, and depth. Yeah. Also, to me, Bob, you can't say rule of space because the car won't move. Yeah. And then you can also say leading lines because you can start here on the right, you can go to the car. Go all the way back. Yeah. Okay. You can say a uh, rule of uh, rule of space. A car. The object doesn't have to move. It just has has to have the potential to move. Some space. Okay. Yeah. So if you butted it up right here, you would be tight on it. Okay. Uh, but I like your foreground and uh, foreground interest in depth. You definitely got that, okay. and you got nice strong lines that take you all the way back as well. Uh, you could actually start here and move back as well as opposed to coming in from here. You start like you just say start on the right. And move through it, <clears throat> but I say foreground. <clears throat> I say foreground inches and depth. That's okay. what I would call it. Nice, nice image. Nice capture. Thank you. I got a question for you. I have Bob. a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, this is Wilma. Cynthia. I love the detail that's in the house, uh, and the color. Did you enhance the color of the roof, and did you enhance the color of the the, the building, the, the rust color? Yes, I went into Viveza, and don't you see the little red on the car? Mm -hmm. I just brought it out just a little because when you use your reds, you know, your eye tends to go there. And I didn't want that to be my main focus. And also, I uh, took that point. Once you put the control point there, you can do shift, take it to the back where there. And then I took the shift and took it to the other side. Yeah, yeah. Very and nice use of color as well. Mm -hmm. And the detail of whatever that is, it's like a cabinet or something, the white cabinet. It's beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice work. Very nice work. Uh, it makes Felix want to Felix wanna go back to get his camera. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If that's no exactly. way. No it's way. It's all done in software with the work that you did on it <laughs> after the fact. So the capture process, you get it, then you go into your editing process and you enhance it or make what you want it to be. Nice capture. Nice piece of work, idea. Thank you. Yeah, and I will it. take hey, that tag off and make it a portfolio piece. Yeah, yeah, because you know that. Uh, who that uh, Felix? Yeah, you yeah. said that uh, the, the image don't have to be movable to be going forward. It just yeah. stationary is still all right. Yeah, you just have to have the potential to move. The potential to go. Yeah. So in this case oh. here, if she'd have cropped it here, you couldn't have called it rural space. But she did. If this car, for some reason, were going to be pulled out, or decided to roll out, you've got some room for it to move into. All uh, right, that's, gotcha. that's perfectly balanced. That's, 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 that, that is a portfolio piece. Yeah, but the way it ties to the shed in the background is yep. nice, yep. and that you do it with the color. It's great. And then red Beautiful and green, shots, red and green Beautiful will complement. <coughs> red and green will complement each other. And this nice blue background. Next nice question. Somebody uh, said so. I have a question to Cynthia. Cynthia, now, you shot this, it's so clear and sharp. Did you shoot it at like F8, at F16? What did I do? I, uh, I, I okay, I my lens is uh, a four, and the sharpest point on my lens is 9.5. So I shot it at 9.0. Yes, yeah, at 9.0 there, that's what you got. Yeah. So, and this is your 24 to 105. Mm hmm. Uh, shot 24, uh, captured at 24 millimeters, and uh, F9 is the, uh, the, is the, is the aperture. <clears throat> uh, very nice, very nice. So this is what you do, what you get when you use that optimum aperture of that lens. If you were to blow these corners up, like I said, they're looking at these blades of grass, uh, there's detail all the way through there. There's nothing that's missing at all. There's detail 
all the way through there. And uh, the image captures it very well. There's something back here, something hanging on the wall or something. There's an extra, some rails back here. Uh, if it'll blow this up, you could probably read. Um, uh, there's some detail in here as well. But nicely done. You can't complain about it. Oh. All right, next okay. question. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Going forward. DR2, uh, DR1 to create, she says, I use a Canon 70 to 200. Uh, seven, use Canon 70 to 200, uh, shutter speed, can hell, ISO 186 millimeters where it was, so this is 70 to 200, okay. Uh, shot it at F5, 164, give a second. Design and composition, three, eight, 10, 15, 16, three is foreground, eight is rule of odds, 10 is leave negative space, 15 is rule space, 16 is left to right, okay. And uh, HR, uh, HDR basic editing merged into Lightroom, Photoshop, square replacement, cut and paste, boat, transform, little cropping size, and that was basically it. Okay, so we'll take a look at the image. And I'll read these out because I'm th sometimes I think you can't read the screen from where you are, maybe, maybe on a small device or what have you. But this is uh, Take, Make, Create. We'll start there. Create. Right. <coughs> It's a create. Yeah, because we changed the sky. It looks like a sky was uh, been replaced there. That sky replacement tool has done a much better job than the early iterations of it. Remember, yes. it's a little bit of bleed, a little bit of an overlap on the edges. It's mm -hmm. doing a much better job in the masking process. Okay, so we got to create here because we replaced the sky. It looks like you changed the color of the water as well. Well, no, actually, um, I didn't not not using the masking to color the water. I just enhanced it. The water was blue, ironically. And I think the sky kind of enhanced the water as well. But so I adjust, but I did have to crop it a little bit from the sky because of the edging a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, um, cause it didn't fit uh, exactly, but uh, the sky was um, kind of overcast. So it, you know, the the sky really did help a lot. Okay. Um, right. with that. So, and then you, uh, this guy on the boat, so you put him in here. To yeah, drop him yeah. Out. And I, I did. Uh, the title was uh, "Time to Relax" or "Time to," uh, you know, chill or something like that. But when I thought about it, because when I had zoomed into it, I remembered that, you know, he had on a mask, and so I. <laughs> I was thinking that uh, maybe I should have said just getting away, getting away from it all. But he still had on a mask. And yeah, you can see the mask on. This is nice and sharp yeah. as well. You see that? Yeah, we can see that a little bit through there. Uh, nice job of dropping him in. Uh, Thank you. Uh, in terms of, uh, I guess it's a free transformation tool. Yes. You got some detail back here that wasn't evident when we're from the long view. Like yeah, I started to kind of crop it so that we can get that too, but you know, it was um I had already cropped it and, and you yeah, know, it I just didn't work well. Initially. I didn't see the car initially in the background there. So yeah. Capture. Uh uh take make or create, we say let's create. What rule are you using? What are you calling the rule? Um well, you know, I thought about it several uh, rules, but it uh, foreground, middle ground, background, of course, and rule of space, and because um, he has space to travel and yeah, he goes all the way across, <laughs> and right, right to left, and you know, well, you know, so right to left, left, right. Okay, and I mean, you could actually use rule of thirds, and, and, and we talk. Oh, about right, and rule of thirds too. Yeah, because right, this becomes your main subject: the boat, the boat or in the water. I don't know what, you, what the title was, but the boatsman in the water. Then he becomes the main subject. The human figure, if they're smaller, uh, they still kind of man present there. Nice capture. Horizon Thank you. Line looks nice and straight, and everything looks like it should be. Uh, same thing I asked of uh, that I asked Cynthia. Pull your copyright off of that when you're doing this kind of stuff. Um, okay. So I know it's you, and uh, but to protect your image, you can tag it if you go anyplace else with it. But it okay. Can, uh, nice image. And this guy for replacement looks well. We uh, we were afraid early on in the process that when we were doing these sky replacements that we'd be using the same sky replacement over and over again. Uh, but I think we've gotten to the point where we know how to use a sky replacement to enhance the photograph. So, right. 
you know, so people are doing that very well. This our place. Questions from uh, questions to DR at this point, anyone? I like it. I like the yurts. And where was that? That was Stone Mountain Park. Yeah, it looks, oh, okay. like, it looks like Stone Mountain to me. I have to go up there and rent one of those. Those are fun to stay in. Thank you for that capture. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thank Going you. The next one. This is from Felix. Uh, cell phone photo. <laughs> 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 To make you don't have to do any work with the cell phone. All right, Felix, you just shoot. <laughs> no, I, I have to do work. I need to compose my shot. There you go. Thank you. I, well defended. I have to make a picture still. I have to compose it and have to go into Lightroom or Photoshop and do some work. The Photoshop, it's a make, he says. Uh, Photoshop six photo. What is Photoshop make six? Uh, HDR I did profile correction in Lightroom. Okay, basic stuff. Move the Photoshop. Crop size to 300 pixels per inch, canvas size, and move back to Lightroom processing and export rule is on number three, foreground enters in there. Okay, and here we go. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty yep. cool. This is the snow to come in now. The birds in the snow. I yeah. shot, I put the cell phone against the glass in my kitchen. Okay. And okay. shot about 12 pictures of that. Video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It almost nice. looks like it's got a black and white element in here. Did you do any you know, black and white with it? I, I tried it, and but I, I didn't, it didn't give me enough pizzazz. Okay, all right. Now we've got bright red here. What's your rule that you're using? Uh, I used right, for a mid -ground, background and foreground. Yeah, you could call that because of your foreground and what have you. But when you're uh, attempting to uh, define your rule, first thing you want to do is define what's your center of interest. And in this case, it's the red birdhouse. And if it's the red birdhouse, a rule of thirds would be fine to use there. But you got birds all over this thing here. This is nice. I like the birds. You got a lot of birds all over the place here. Nice birdhouse. I guess it's a bird feeder on it or something. A bird feeder. That kind of pulls them in there. Mm -hmm. You got all kinds of birds here. Uh, but nice capture. Uh, but I go at rule of first, and it's definitely a take in terms of the way you set up. You didn't, didn't do a whole lot to alter the image or not. And it's an unusual look. I like the branches that can um, keep you pushed down to this corner here. And the red green kind of pop off the page at each other. Nice capture. Question. Now, this I was going to ask you about. The frame looks a little gray. The white frame looks a little matte, looks a little gray. Uh, why is that? Did you? I don't know why that happened. Okay. Just it just happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it would pop off the off the page a little bit more if that was like a pure white, a pure white. But it looks like I don't. When you do something like that, it looks like it's by design or deliberate. So that's why I asked the question. I would see, I'd see that on a, just a white. Well, it, that was it. Was the second time I did it. The first time it was real white, and then mm -hmm. I went back and did it again. Oh, and you went back. You went back and did an adjustment prior to adding a frame. That's what happened. So do your adjustments prior to you did. You did an adjustment after you'd added the frame. So correct. You do your adjustment. Do the picture by itself. Do all of your adjustments first, and then add your frame. Okay. Um, then you get that pure right there. Questions to Felix? I yeah. had a question. Um, I wait after Donna. Okay. Um, when you do your processing, are you processing in your cell phone with Lightroom and Photoshop, or do you transfer the image to your laptop and do the processing? I transfer the image to Lightroom, and I process in Lightroom. But are you processing on your laptop or and on your cell phone? On my laptop. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah I, I try and do It's kind of hard for me to do it. It's so small. My uh -huh. old eyes can't see the thing properly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I wanted to be sure since you're yeah. so experienced at that. Thank you. Hey, Felix. Yes, ma'am. I, I want to talk about the body of your image. Um, you have a unique image. I, cardinals, um, to have the male and female cardinals, cardinals there at the same time, that is unbelievable that's just really nice you know the male are the um, bright red and yeah the pale ones are the females but look at that you got two males and three females there i just think that is so unique and to show that winter sky i like it that's the winter sky that's why it's so gray 
And it's just really pretty neat. It's uh, unique to have that many cardinals. And some people uh, from different places say that cardinals are good luck if you have them on your property. Well, I hope I get good luck. I got a zillion of them I, and I feed them all the time. That's why they look so fat. Ah. What are you feeding them? Back. Yeah. All right, now you after, Felix. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Do your adjustments prior to uh, adding that in frame, you're, you, you're good to hear. And I got a question for you too, Bob. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I'm fine. You got to show me again how to take this, my thing off of here and put it on the photograph instead of it, it'll keep winding up on my uh, Mac. His yeah, tagline because uh, it's on the frame. Yeah, you're exporting it out of Lightroom and you've told Lightroom to add a tagline at a certain place on it. So just turn that off when you're going to export it out. I thought I turned it off, but maybe I didn't. Yeah, go into Lightroom, go to your export, go to your copyright. Just uncheck that box, it won't be there. And okay. if you have to add it later, you can add it in Photoshop or you can go back to Lightroom and do it. Yeah. But uh, it's not necessary to put it there. I wouldn't put it there. Thanks, right. It's about two o'clock. Do we want to take a break? Yes, it's actually later than two o'clock. It's two o six. We got a few more of these to do. Not many, but a few more of these to do. You want to take a break and come back? Can I pop? No, let's continue. Uh, let's okay. continue. All right, then here we go. I got a question to raise at the end of the uh, end of the session, and it's regarding um, uh, virtual sessions versus on-site sessions. And I'll, I just want to raise a question if I, and I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you about that just a little bit later on. I had a question come up about that. This is from Hakeem Island, Rotan, off coast of Honduras, with two. And the reason I mentioned with two is he got he sent two of his in. I think I've got them in the right order, but we'll see. I spoke 224, FA, 250, local, focal at 120, capture park, uh, room number four frame within a frame. Do you look, uh, uh, Hakeem, are you there? And then there's another one from, from Hakeem as well. So we'll see which one. Oops, here we go. Yes, I'm here. That's interesting. Do you all see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, first one. This is just an abandoned ship, it looks like, off the Isle of Rotan or what have you. Is that? Let me just go down here. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you want to tell us what this take maker create? And then what, uh, this is what I take. I took it with a 300 lens, and it's all the way out there. <laughs> okay, all right. You got really up close and personal there uh, with it. Uh, what route would you employ here? Uh, leading lines. Yeah, you do some leading lines. You want maybe some foreground interest, middle and background as well. Okay. And the and ISO this, was 100. ISO was so, one. Okay. Now, let's go back to your... I think it was here. Leading lines, abandoned ship. And then you had another one for it. This one for the flower. Right. Frame. Okay. All right. So this is two different homework pieces as well. One was for week two and the other is for week one. Okay. I'll see what you're doing. You're making up something. Let's put this down here then. And then go back up here. So we got this one uh, is off. The, oops. I think I did that wrong. This one belongs down here. And this one belongs over here. Okay, here we go. Go now. Okay, so this is uh, leading lines, abandoned ship. All right, there you go. And you took those with a long lens. It looks a little soft. And uh, what I want to do is look at. I don't have metadata on it, so I can't tell. But it looks a little soft uh, to me. It's thinking about uh, F8 and 125. Okay. Uh, and F8. What's the, what's the focal length of the lens? 300. Uh, it was 55 to 300. Okay, and, we're, and you're at 300 or 55, which are you? Yeah. I'm at 300. Okay, and you saw shutter speed is 125, maybe? Yes. Okay, and that's uh, that's why it looks a little soft. The image looks a little soft. Uh, and yet holding, up long, holding a long lens like that, you probably should be up on 250, maybe 500 of a second. It will, it will okay. sharpen up a little bit, a little bit there. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, questions to Hakeem regarding his image. Okay. And said, take me. This is a take, apparently. And then we did a leading line. And we, uh, let's see what the next one's about. And this was uh, week two. That was week one. This is week two. You're making up some stuff here. 
Uh, Captain of Royal Town. I just read this frame within a frame, rule number four. Rule number four is frame within a frame. Okay, and this is just another capture that you get. Uh, now, how do you call in this frame within a frame? Looking at these things here around right, it? Right, the leaves and the, they're kind of bulk it, but I still call it a frame within a frame. <laughs> okay. Or you could say center composition. Yeah, you might, you know, uh, your composite, I mean, you could, no, I can't call it center because it's not symmetrical. You could say, you could call it center, but it is not symmetrical. And bokeh, you don't want to refer to this as bokeh. Bokeh means you cannot tell what the background objects are. This is basically shallow depth field. Let's we'll see if we got any, and we don't have any, uh, I don't have any metadata regarding this as well. So somewhere I'm losing metadata, uh, but it's a, it's a nice capture in terms of color. Uh, the red and green, it's nice and uh, capture there. Uh, this little piece here on the corner here kind of pulls you out of the frame. Uh, okay. This might be one of those where you want to just go in. You could probably go in, do a uh, select subject, and then just drop all these tones in the background and just go completely dark back. That might work as well. But I like the piece of work that Flu did if you want to call attention to the flower up, up front there. All right, questions to, uh, to Hakeem regarding the answer. Hakim, is that a bird of paradise? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. And this is a take, make, or create. Uh, and, I say make. I play with the colors a little bit. Uh, and I cropped it, too. Okay. All right. Uh, so you did do something in terms of boosting or enhancing. You're making the ref. Okay. All right. Questions to, to uh, Hakim going uh, folk. All right. Let's move to the next one here. This is from Michael. This is a make, he calls it rule number three, Lightroom, six captures of three brackets, convert to HDR panoramic, crop, adjust for highlight and shadow. Photoshop, use healing brush with power lines and towers. Okay, so that's uh, you dust do the light and shadows on the rocks. Sky replacement number five. So we're looking at probably a create. This is the, oops, okay, this is a base image here. Okay. Uh, this is a base image, and we have a discussion about straightening it up. And this is why you see this in back four. I mentioned uh, the horizon line looked like it was not very level, and uh, we fixed that. But here's the image itself, uh, and he's doing a lot of stuff with it. Sky replacement, uh, Michael, and some color. How'd you get these colors to come out like three using the detail? Just let the Lord use me, and uh, <laughs> 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 just made it happen. Yeah. No, it, it was just adjusting the Lightroom and just <laughs> increasing the saturation, and um, that's it. I removed the power lines, and, and it's so kind of funny. Before I, I started this class, I would never even think about that being a distraction. But as soon as I saw those power lines, it must have been the inner spirit of you talking, Bob, but it just ignored the heck out of me. So I had, so I had to get rid of them. And uh, these power lines here is what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I see them now. You got, got them in the background. You got them all over the place. And you actually went in and took them all out. <laughs> okay, I got you. I see what you did. That's a uh, that's ridiculous work because power lines in situations like that sometimes are hard to kind of correct. Yes, they are. Yeah, but the color, uh, uh, the way you push and shift it, the color uh, makes it kind of interesting. There's a guy by the name of David LaChapelle, who's not the comedian, but the David LaChapelle, the photographer, who uses color, uh, very similar to what you're doing. Look him up. His uh, name is David LaChapelle. Uh, but he uses color like this. Because these, these colors are, are pushed. Yeah, you got these purple, purplish colors over here in the mountain. You got the colors on the water as well. Uh, and that color kind of plays throughout. But it's kind of a surreal looking image. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it works from a, from a surreal standpoint. But his work is all surrealistic type stuff as well. But you might take a look and see what he's doing. Um, and this is that Rock Quarry Park that you mentioned. And, it's, a, it's, a west, it's a west side um, uh, park, the same park that they opened up on the other side. And so this is the quarry unit. I did not realize it was that close to downtown. And I saw this mm -hmm. structure in the background. I'm like, well, that park is uh, So that might be something to explore. Might be something to look at from a field trip standpoint as well. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, take, make, or create. You said create. 
because uh, it's definitely altered. Okay, so what rule would you employ here? Uh, number three, um, foreground uh, interest and death. Okay, you could call that. Uh, you can also uh, do uh, from uh, what, what's the thing from left to right? What's they called? Uh, uh, that left to right is going to be rule number 16. Uh, well, I do okay. kind of like leading lines for this one as well. You got yeah. this here that you kind of sit around, and these lines here pull you up and around and up to this structure over here. That's got kind of, yeah. yeah. It kind of moves you through that as well. Uh, nice capture. Questions to Michael? Oh. Yeah, Michael, um, where did you take that at? You was up in the woods? No, that's at that, uh, that, that park, uh, Westside Park. Yeah, I know. I was I was there, and uh, I was down there by that power plant, and they got a fence all the way around there, and I couldn't. I mean, yeah, you, they have a place, and like an observation point that you walk up and take and take a picture right over it. Oh, so you can yeah, go okay. down here and then come up a hill to put you on the top. Yeah, it's a little hill there. I know there's a fence underneath it, so I just had my tripod and 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 uh, went above, shot above the fence. Okay, and this oh, is okay because. Right? The fence turned me around. Okay. Oh, well, wait a minute. They, they, they didn't trust you or something. They didn't think you were terrorists. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I meant was uh, I couldn't get a good shot through the fence. Uh, yeah. and, and, but you went up to the observation point. Yeah, okay, I went up the observation. Got, it's nice yeah. up there. Yeah, I was everything. down on the yeah. ground. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, what was the technique we did that? Uh, and our panoramic, it's a panoramic as well. Mm -hmm. You're doing multiple images for that. You mentioned that in the frame there. Other questions of Michael from Luton? Pretty good shot, Michael. I got to go up there. Okay. You should come up there. Bring a lunch. Camp yeah. Out. Have a good yeah. time. Okay, this is from Robert. Thou shalt not kill. Canon 60, lens 24 to 105. Uh, rule number eight. Rule eight is rule odds. Processing light. Rule basic. Silver effects. Process. Silver Flex Pro 2 with four control points on the Bible. Okay. This is from Robert. Okay. Now this is here's the okay, here's the base image. And then uh I move to this image here. Okay, I see the yeah, that's kind of nice. Now you almost got Robert, are you there? <clears throat> Robert? I thought I saw him earlier. I'm here. Oh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, this is almost converted to black and white, looks like to me. Did, is that Was that the intent? The intent was, it was black and white, and then I was I brought the Bible out, but I didn't bring it out enough. No, the Bible looks fine. I mean, it, 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 otherwise, it would be too much. If you went to this original red, uh, but I like the, this is a nice conversion, uh, and it's subtle enough where you don't have to, you have to have the bright red there, is what you're looking at stuff too. So and this is uh, this is this is definitely a create uh, take make create because uh, you you're just dis not distorting but you move the black and white you got some color in the image as well this is not the way the original scene was and here's the original and here's the black and white now so, that I'm looking at it like that it looks a little more antiqueish yeah it does look a little yeah yeah and uh, all right so what rule are you on? Number, was it eight? Rule of odds. Yeah, okay, you got three up and going on there. And this could also, uh, the way they adjacent or touch each other, that could also be, um, uh, I was going to say you could have this as one unit. One. Yeah, but uh, I think this is a rule of odds. There's some framing going on here. What's your center of interest? The Bible itself, <clears throat> the guns across the Bible. You have to kind of tie that down a little bit. So, but you could also have some framing going on here as well. Uh, interesting image. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, whole Bible 16, maybe James. Uh, I have the same uh, same feedback as I take the tag right off because that kind of distracts from the image there and what have you. But a nice set of handguns there. Uh, questions to Robert regarding his image? We did the take, make, or create. We did the rule. Are those Colt, Colt 45, Robert? No, those are Ruger 44. Oh. And your guns? Yes, they are. Yeah, they're real. <laughs> I was about to say, are they functional? Yeah. Yes, yeah. they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Okay. All right. Nice, nice guy. What is this against the background? I've got a chair similar to that with that same that, type of pattern. That is the ottoman in my family room. I just placed them on top of that and took the picture of it. Okay. 
Uh, if we were to slap these images over just a little bit or give a little bit more here, we could do a centered composition symmetry with it. Uh, so we'd have the trigger kind of showing on this side as well, or more of the gun in this case. And the hammer. And the more the, uh, the hammer, if you will. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, so nice image, nice capture. Um, so we'll go ahead. Questions to Robert before we move to the next one? I'm trying to make the weird stay on point here, time wise. Looks like a shot out of the yeah. harder they fall. I it's like, well, it'd be two things. Uh, Sharon did something, then I think it was Kelly. I was just saying, it looks like an image out of, out of the movie, The Harder They Fall with Idris Elba, Regina King. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it looks like that type um, element. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I better did. believe it. Yeah, that was a good move. I saw that uh, the first time a couple, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I, I love cowboy movies. movies. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, uh, so do I. Oops, where are we here? Oops. There we go. Okay, this is Sharon's I mentioned. Uh, and I don't have a write-up. Did I? I had, I had a write-up from Sharon regarding this one. Yeah, here it is. I apologize. My write-ups are so crappy. Um, I'm usually on the run doing everything, so I do apologize. The plan, capture, image, process, and background, super effects, and compare it. Compared saturation test of vision of the image, saturation vision, okay? Review crop required, Photoshop cleanup, image sizing, image canvas size, they've been completed. So. All right, so what do you got to take, make, or create in this image? <laughs> <laughs> this is where you got to <laughs> You know, I don't know. <laughs> that's that's you know, sticky yeah. looking. I am too through with this image. I was trying to use lighting techniques, and that's the only thing I cared about. You can see the triangles on the lights um, that I was using, and that's the only thing I was concerned about. So I created it in my head, uh, but as far as photography goes, um, I just I just um, took it. Okay, so I, nice picture. I mean, it's a setup. You did I obviously did some work to get it set up like this and get it in the supposed to do it with it. Any cropping to this that you take a far from a distance in cropping close to what happened? I was right up on the camera. I used that 85 1.4, yeah. very little cropping, very little. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe to straighten it. Yeah. But that okay. was about it. My again, I was more concerned about practicing lighting. So, okay, so what, what is what is your light? What is your direction of a light here? Side left, right, up, down. Straightforward. It's under. Um, it's it's just barely under the lens, and that's why that shadow is there. Okay, so it's barely, yeah. okay. Because we, yeah. what we're going to be doing going forward on the homework assignments is, is calling out the lighting that that was used as well. Yeah. Okay, so we got basically a take. This looks like a take. Yes, this is a take. Okay, rule that you're employing. Okay, you say it's fill the frame, but I can understand fill the frame. That, but, fill the frame. But, yeah, you know, for me, I, I wasn't thinking about anything else in the frame, so I wanted to get the, the eyes as my, um, oh, what do you call that? Central of interest. But okay. I, well, the I, eyes I, definitely do oh, that yeah. when you're this close in. But you still got to have an overall frame. Uh, all, all yeah. Overall so it wouldn't be framing either, framing the, of the eyes? No. You could, I see what, <clears throat> how you're getting there. You got this corner, this piece up here, and you got this. Yeah. Thing around. yeah. Okay. You could probably push framing there, but this is but more the of a dominant rule to fill the frame. Okay. Another yes. lesson learned. That's yes. what I'm here for. Yeah. yeah, it's nice tax sharp image. Uh, Headshot. Okay, it's nice and bright. 8514 is a sharp lens. If you didn't know, if you don't know it, you know it now, most of you. Okay. Uh, questions to Sharon? I do. I have a question. Sharon, <laughs> so did you, did you just have one light, one main light here? Um, actually, there were um, three lights, um, one coming underneath the lens, two overheads. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. in the middle of the two overheads coming off of my ceiling in my office. Oh, oh. No backlight. That's why it's dark back there. Okay. Okay. Because it looks almost like you just have one main light in the front. Mm -hmm. If you, um, before cleanup, you would see the reflection of the overhead lights in my eyes. And um, yeah, the, the overhead lights were reflecting some. 
You can oh, see what just happened. All oh, they had to be cleaned. So that's you, Sharon? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Why you say that? Why you say no, that? No, I, I didn't have anybody else. It was beautiful. Like Hey, I know I've been trying to do self is that well myself. So that's why I'm asking you, Annie. Both of you had some great shots. Self. Yeah, and I just don't want to know what the secret is. I uh, want to know the secret. I didn't, I didn't think it was her either. Well, that's even, I like that part. Nobody knows it's me. <laughs> because I, I know who it was you. I have issues. I have a whole bunch of them. But again, um, my thought was trying to learn lighting. Um, there's a lot that can be given to it. So, again, you can see the triangles on the forehead. That's showing you that light is coming from another direction. Yep, right there. Yeah. And uh, then you can tell where one light is is because it's under that lens and it's casting a shadow. Yeah, you know, so, I was trying to get back to Gwen's question in terms oh, what of was it? see the light. So you see oh. this rim light here. Or there's a light somewhere below this to cast shadow <laughs> upward. And then yeah. up on top, you see the shadow here. So there's got to be light up here somewhere. And then it looks like uh, there's a little flat light that's in front of her as well. So, and uh, then you right see there. shadows here. So where is this light coming from? So that's probably down, a little bit down low in front of the huh. fan that's holding in front of face. Uh, nice capture. Uh, nice, crisp and sharp. Nice, strong. Sure light light. Is. So, I tried. I'm, I'm working on lighting. <laughs> Uh, and then from a compositional standpoint, it works well as well. So you've got kind of a diagonal going across there. It works well. Okay. All right. Other questions before we go to the next image? <laughs> okay. How did you beautiful. Feel? Good portrait. This is uh, from Sharon Casselo. Uh, this is a thing, second of the year. Title, The Cross, Canon R6. Now, this R6, this is a mirror cam mirrorless uh, Casselo. It is, yeah. Okay, so you, you're showing the mirrorless as well. And I'm interested in the images that are coming in or done with the mirrorless camera, so uh, we'll look at this one. Uh, 75 to 300 focal length. Uh, is, uh, now, are you using a converter or adapter for the 75 300, or is the 75 300 mirrorless lens? No, I actually had an adapter for that one, but some of my lens are, are actually fitting the camera. Okay, right there. So you had an adapter for this focal length. For that particular uh, lens, yeah. Okay, Lightroom basic process and photo cleanup, uh, sky, repla sky replacement, sizing framing rule 1, 2, 10, 11, 13. What are your top three rules? You got one is rule of third. You got two is center composition. You got 10 is uh, leave ten negative one. space. Yeah, negative space. And then point of view is what, 13? Yeah, 11 is... Uh, 11 is simplicity and minimum. Yeah, so let's look at the end. So and what I want you to do going forward, and I've looked at the image a couple of times, but what I want you to do going forward is to um, is to use one particular rule. Okay. Uh, top three. And this is, uh, uh, this I would call point of view, looking up. Um, and you could use simplicity here as well, even though you got some things going on in the background. Simplicity and minimalism, you can use that as well. That nice was camera. my main one too, simplicity and minimalism. Yeah, minimalism. minimalism. Yeah. Okay. Is this a bird on top of this cross? Um, you know what? I really <laughs> couldn't tell. I hear it you. Looks like, looks like, uh, I thought it was a little bird too. It's a little bird. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a bird on top of Little bird's yeah. trying to tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you do the sky replacement? Is it a sky replacement? It, it is. I did a sky replacement and then kind of played with the colors a little to make it look a little gloomy. Okay, take, make, create then. Uh, create. Okay, definitely. You get the background change there. Uh, and then uh, the we already talked about those there. It's a nice composition. Uh, it's a very powerful photograph, I think. Uh, Thank especially you. with the cross and the lightning strikes there uh, behind it. Uh, it's very important. It's a very powerful photograph. And Only Bob would find that bird. Yeah, I'm mean, I just looking at it. It's all I was doing. So. <laughs> But, uh, you did uh, do some thing with the sky in the background and what have you? I, I did. I kind of played with the colors a little bit. I wanted to look a little muted and, you know, a little gray. Yeah. So I changed the colors a bit. Yeah. And uh, the purplish uh, or purple. Right. I had a little, little color in there. Okay, cool. That's, uh, uh, that's majestic or kingly, if you would, or majestic, if you would, in terms of using the color, color purple. Like lighting. Yeah. Lightning. It, it, yeah, it is. Yeah, it looks like it might be like 
cover for a book or something like that. And you have the type across it. Nice piece of work. I like it. I Thank like you. it. So, mm -hmm. Questions to uh, Castillo regarding it? This is Cynthia. Cynthia. I love the image, but your tagline down there on the bottom on your frame. I knew. I, I figured Bob would get me on that tagline. <laughs> not there yet. <laughs> I got it. Before. You know, I, I yeah. said I just had to tell you that. She's my sister. You Thank know you, Cynthia. Oh, you yeah. know, I love you, girl. I know. <laughs> but once you go into Lightroom, uh, go into Photoshop and then back to Lightroom. Before That's you, what I did. Before mm -hmm. you import it out, export it out, turn, that, uh, turn your copyright off. You wouldn't get that. Okay, I will. <laughs> but nice capture, very nice image. Uh, Thank you. Now, Sh Sharon, where is this? Oh, I, I went out uh, over to um, my church over on, um, uh, what is that? Woodrow Road. Woodrow Road, okay. Uh, the lighting on it, I see. Where's your light coming from in, in this case? Your main light? Uh, the main light was coming from behind. I was... It was behind the the cross. It was behind that. I, I kind of took it at an angle because I didn't want the, the light directly on it. But then I changed the sky a, a bit too. So yeah, forget about the sky because next week we're, we're going to talk about lighting where it's coming from. Look at your mm -hmm. shadow. It's on the left. The shadows right. here. So your light is up here. Okay. Yeah. So the light is up here somewhere. You've got a sunlight or whatever light source is. It's coming down on. It. And the, sh the light will always be opposite your shadow. So if your shadow's down here, the light is going to be up there. Okay. Oh, okay. But yeah, nice, nice capture. Very nice image. Very nice. Thank topic. you. Very strong, mm -hmm. powerful image. Yeah. All right. Next uh, image is going to be this is from Theodore. Uh, and I can get a write up from him. Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry about that. But, uh, so this is, uh, this is which I don't, I don't have to see if I have any. And it, uh, 631 800, 1 to 400. Well, this is your mirrorless as well? Yeah, it's the mirrorless. Okay, yeah, so we got yeah. mirrorless here. Right, uh, it is like, take, make, create. Uh, take. Okay, and uh, uh, rule that you're employing? Uh, rule thirds, yeah, leading lines. Third here, leading lines. I see that going in here. You could also use left to right going in here. Uh, and this was shot with mirrorless. Now, this is one of the things that uh, mirrorless cameras are supposed to do well for you. And that I just the, use the um, detail. You didn't use the eye focus or the uh, autofocus. No, I didn't focus. I didn't use it. I didn't have. I didn't have a chance. Okay, so um, quick so, shot. But I had threw some um, uh, old bread in the water, and this okay. guy saw it, so he was flying in to um, to get it and. And I was trying to play around with the camera at the same time. And so I didn't have enough time to switch over to the um, item recognition um, yeah. tool. So, so you were coming to water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we call that chum. <laughs> yeah. But it's a nice picture. I like what you did with the, with the, uh, with the capture bird coming in full flight. Yeah. And we, we had some discussion online about the composition. There's a little bit more space to the right on the original composition, but just tightening it up. You've got a good shot. A uh, little bit of a bleed off here on the edge there, a little bit there. Yeah. But other than that, it's nice capture. I like the work. So uh, questions of Felix, uh, to Felix, uh, too. You can send me the field too. Patty? Yeah, go ahead, Sharon. Did you try to, um, I mean, just a thought, that left edge there looks like it's really blowing out. Could you have thought about burning in there and bring that down? I have a image similar with some girls on a beach and the same thing happened. So I went in and I burned mine to bring that down just a little so that you can have the difference between that mat and the actual image. Yeah. 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 I didn't. Um, well, it was, a, it was really um, it was a thing of time. I, I understand. Just, I sent it into Bob at the last minute, and um, yeah. I just wanted to put something in, put yeah. something up there just to get started. But yeah, I, I could have done that. Yeah. I didn't do anything, yeah. but you know, I just put the uh, take. Mm -hmm. But um, bring the highlights down. down. Nice work yeah, again. and again, tone that out would have separated the uh, the image from the from the the mat. 
Yeah. It's a nice capture. I like the detail. There is. Uh, but I, I didn't realize you were chumming the water. I thought you just pulled that camera up and just locked it. I know. <laughs> You're throwing bread out to the bird. That's kind of yeah, but, I mean, but you see, but when he landed, it was, um, he was, he was still in the, uh, the middle of the lake. Okay. You know, because you can see it. You know, I, I had my 400 and I was fully extended on, if you look at the um, metadata. Yeah. Yes, the um, this is the so he's quite a ways away still. I like that reflection. Yeah. The droplets on the water. Nice capture, Ed. Yeah. yeah. Nice work. Nice to work. And I'm sure you'll get back with that mirrorless as well. So yeah, I'll work on it. Yep. Nice capture. All right, questions to Tanny. We did to take the crew. We did the rules. What have you? So going to the next image. This is oh, that was the original, and this is the one before that was the scaled down version of it. There are uh, digital capture thing titled off and way 300 PPI edit Lightroom clean up with Photoshop. M5 is leading lines. Is that what it is? L -L -E yeah, leading lines. And then main image. Okay, here we go. The image here. Okay. Now this is that's uh, we had discussions about this by Flip. Let's go back to the original image because it's a copy there. Here's the original image here. Uh, and he's using uh, he's using leading lines going in this direction here. And I suggest maybe flip it, and you'd have leading lines going in that direction. It could be either one, but the, well, I, I was just saying you want to flip the whole photo, Bob. That's why I said I thought you want to flip the whole photo. Yeah, well, that's what I did with this one here. I flipped it because the original and this is the original by the way it came in today. Is this is this the correct one then? Yeah. That's right, one. Uh huh. Okay. And then uh, the flip was one. I just flipped it mm -hmm. from left to right so they could go that way. And that way you could employ uh, the other rule, which is left, right, uh, et cetera. Uh, but either one of them would work. And he said he preferred it this way. And that's okay. Either one would work there as well. well Bob, I, I, I was misunderstood. I thought you flipped the whole photo over. That's what I was thinking. You mean flip upside down or something? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. I just misinterpreted you on that one. Oh, okay. Well, no problem then. Yeah, but I would use it this way, and I would call it lead lines. It kind of runs off from here because you got a larger item here, and then it can blend off into the background there. Did this guy here didn't light up or something? Is his bulbs out or something? I don't know. I, they, they got, the, the, the two of them is like that. I don't know. Uh, oh, here's one no, here. I don't know. Right. two of them like that. Yeah, there's one back here as well, not lit up. So I don't know it's meant to. Uh, the light went out on them. Yeah. I think I would have copied this one and put it over here and pasted it in. <laughs> well, since they had two of them, I just said, well, maybe that's what that's what was uh, should have been. I had two of them not showing up like that, but I didn't bother. Yeah, this one here, if you wanted to go and do some work on it, I would take this completely out and made it just black. Two, three, four, five, six. And then be copied and pasted this and then put it over here. But either way, it works as well and, and in terms of leading line left to right. Was this take, make, or create? Uh, make. Okay. And what do you call it? Make. What did you do to make it? <laughs> Repeat that again. Take, make, or create. What did you do to make it? To, to make I it? Make, I just, well, I cleaned it up. There's a, there a tree on the right there. Oh, okay. So you did this. And, and uh, there's trees in the background there. I faded up. Out. Okay. All right, so you almost get into the point where you're creating. If you had trees that were, let's go to your original. If you had, mine don't have, uh, if you had trees in the background that you look out, you almost get to the point where you're creating something. Excuse me, uh, you're creating something here. Yeah, I, you know, I thought, well, I, and the sky paint wouldn't work on it, so uh, I just, just left it, you know, left it alone. They took, uh, took some of the trees out of it, and, uh, but I get to create next week probably. Okay. All right. Question to uh, Theron regarding his image. We're about to wrap up. I think it's about the last one. Any questions to Theron? Theron, where were you? I was down at Atlanta Zoo to the uh, Chinese Lantern Festival. Oh, okay. Oh. Nice. Atlanta had a Chinese festival? I didn't know that. Was in yeah, I didn't need to. My sister-in-law uh, 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 informed me of it. She lived in South Georgia. They came up, and so we all went to uh, went to the lab sh um, Lantern Show. Yeah, where was it? At, uh, at the Atlanta Zoo. At the zoo. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Very nice. I wish I'd known. Really nice. Very nice. Very nice. It's trip. still up, but it'll be over very soon. You got a couple weekends left, maybe, that you can get there. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought I was thinking it was um, last weekend was over. Wait a minute. Could have been the case here. Well, 
All right. Well, uh, all right. Questions to Felix at this point? I'm sorry, oh. Felix to uh, Theron at this point? Oh. He didn't like him. Felix, oh, <laughs> He didn't like him. I didn't do nothing. Okay, go back around. I think that was the last one. All right, that's the homework, folks. Let's stop the share, and uh, we're getting close to wrapping up. So any questions about anything we've covered over the last couple of days or so? And uh, Alexa, don't let me forget to raise this question about the survey. Uh, any questions about anything we brought over the last couple of days? Bob, uh -huh. this is Cynthia. Uh, okay. You will be putting the video uh, of this morning's class. Yeah, I'll have to get that from uh, 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 Cynthia Donnell will send that one to me. The one from yesterday, if we need that, I'll have to get it from uh, from Gabriel. But I will, I'll put it up. Morning, and, uh, so I appreciate that. Put up, yeah, uh, okay. Gabriel, video, and Cynthia. Cynthia automatically sends me her, so I'll throw both of them in there, what have you. Okay, with that said, uh, there was we had a conversation uh, when the class first started regarding um uh, on site being on site with classes uh or being or continue doing virtual with classes uh lou walker is trying to put together and i say lou walker uh, <coughs> loosely because this is something that i imagine that they are doing they're trying to uh get together bring us uh, back into an on-site environment if possible one of the questions that's, that has come up was could we do kind of a hybrid class maybe a mix of that and the mixture would be uh, the option to do on-site and virtual. Uh, do we have any ideas about uh, that we'd like to offer up that I can roll back to the Walker regarding regarding this this concept? Whether you want to go back into the building or we can keep doing virtual classes? Do we need to do a survey to get some feedback from you? I can create a survey, send it out, and gather some information forward it on to Lou Walker. But this is just something came up as we opened the class, the discussion up, the, opened the class up this afternoon. And uh, I don't want to get into the details, of it, but how do you feel about going back on site, uh, having on-hand classes and things of that nature? Do you want to continue doing it this way or do you have any thoughts at all about it? So that was one of the questions that I uh, was wanting to raise at this point. And if there are, if we have any strong feelings on it, what I will do is to create some type of survey and send it out to so say, what do you feel about this? What do you feel about that? We did a, a survey years ago. About do the, the survey. Uh, the instructors and things of that nature. Well, I'll tell you how I feel about it, Bob. I, I love the virtual, you know, okay. because it gives me more flexibility. But there, there are times that I wish I was in the classroom where you can actually show me uh, with the camera. You know, right. I agree. I agree. Who's that? Uh, Ramona? Ramona. I, I think there's much value I had to be in the classroom. The interactions, exchanges. Okay. Or, like there, both. or could there be an option of both? Yes. If you want to join the class one day and not the next, you have that option of going online or coming to class. Is that possible, Bob? Uh, uh, I think you should do the survey. Uh, yeah, that's what it's that's what it's starting to sound like. Yeah, online or both. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with discussion. But I want discussion about it. Yeah, no, no, no. That's what the whole point is. Just because mm -hmm. yeah, right. And then now, uh, and if there's enough uh, feeling um, about it, what I would do is probably put down put together a questionnaire that just goes out to each person, mm -hmm. and then let each person send their feedback. And then I would kind of uh, kind of do some analysis and say 50%, uh, 60% would like to do inside. 40% uh, would like to continue online. There's another 30% that may want to do the option of one or both. Or so. so I'd have to kind of uh, pull it together and say, and this, send it to Lou Walker. And then they would decide how they want to do it. But uh, it, it is still getting your opinion out and getting your opinion heard. So it sounds like I'm going to wind up doing a sort of but I just want to kind of to open it up because we've had about three or four people very vocal about it. And then we've had about nine or 10 people who haven't said anything about it. And a lot of people don't want to, uh, would not, don't want to publicly express their opinion. They may want to send an opinion if you are uh, given the option, something to write in or like so forth. And uh, if we did so, what I would do is uh, it would remain anonymous. I would just uh, tally up the result 
let's say I said I've got 50% who want to do continue doing virtual, 40% who would like to have a mix of it, and then maybe 10% who uh, I want to do something else. So so I'll probably put together a survey. But it's so to when you it. when you do your survey, Bob, be yeah. sure to add in there whereas since we have two days of classes, yeah. uh, like Diane said, we, I think, having one day at the center and the other day virtual what gives you, will give you a mix of everything. We'll have one day where we would be in so that we can interact, help with things that you need to do right there on the spot and the virtual which gives you the opportunity not to have to go in there but we can learn still as we're doing now so okay. whatever you survey that you do make yeah. sure it's a three-way situation no the survey would ask the question what your preferences are and then you'd have to break down that and it was yeah but, oh well you can add your comment right i agree <laughs> Okay, all right, then that'll work as well. And Bob, this is Annie. If we go back into the building, would we be limited into how many would be able to attend the class? That's, That's another point. story. That's a good point, because right now, I think they're limiting, they got blocks of time where they're limiting people to about 10 per class or something like that. Oh, okay. So we got those are things you'd have to consider as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but we could get the ball rolling, and also I think this would be beneficial to Lou Walk to understand where you stand from a position on uh, in terms of whether you go back in or not. But again, there's uh, with the social distancing and with the pandemic protocol. I guess it's a better way of saying it is that you may be limited. You can't go to the building and just kind of hang out all day. You go to your class and you got to come out because other people may want to come in. So there are some pros and cons about it uh, wow. from an on-site standpoint. Uh, but I would, uh, it's not, it's not going to be like it was before. You, and you don't have a victory room. You don't have a place you can go hang out. You go take a class, you take the class, and you leave. Uh, that's kind of uh, based on some of the feedback I've gotten. But again, just opening up the discussion, and this will be input that Lou Walker can use to help them make decisions in terms of how they want to move forward the whole process there. So. Another thing you might uh, remind them if they're talking about our going in the morning and not going in the afternoon, we have morning and afternoon classes on Friday yeah. and we have, you know, afternoon class on Thursday. So are they going to not invite us to our afternoon class if we go to a morning class? There are that, things to be worked that out. Possibly that could possibly be the case. Yeah. Uh, but you may not wind up having two classes. You may only wind up one class on site, the morning class or the afternoon class. And then you got to look at it from the impact. What's the impact to the instructor? Are they going to be able to get there for a certain class and then not get there for another class? And go? So, but, uh, uh, yeah, we would have to survey and kind of, uh, right. kind of get your feedback. And like I said, I, I think I can develop something that would kind of address all that and give everybody the option of stating their opinion and then going through and categorizing the data and, and coming up with how the majority or how the group feels about it. So, yeah. so as but long as we don't wear out our instructor that he can't come to class, <laughs> everything is a okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your instructor takes a survey yeah, too. <laughs> And, and also, I it. think that we need to know the what ifs also, just as you were speaking about whether yeah. or not we'd be invited back to the afternoon class. I guess in a, ahead of time, we would need to know before yeah. we actually, you know, vote or something okay, that so if you, this is the case, then this is what will happen. This yeah. is what this looks like. Yeah, and then, yeah. but, but Bob, I think it would be feasible to have the Friday evening class since we only go over the uh, homework online. Yeah. So, uh, and, 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 and I'm sorry, go ahead. I say, I think, I think it'd be a lot easier to have the Friday evening class online only because we basically go over homework. Yeah, that's that's uh, online. Okay, so the, I got you. So the owner of the uh, homework session could be done online versus hands on. Session. Right, right. Yeah. And, and leave the morning class for more hands on if we need yeah. help with something. Okay, yeah. 
I have a question. Uh, Who's that? This is Wilma. And my question is, once Lou Walker opens up, are they going to have virtual classes as well? Oh, you know, that's an expense. So are they going to continue the virtual classes or say, now that we're on site, we're no, no longer going to have the virtual classes? That's not a question I can answer, but it's something you could put, we could put on a survey. What, Cynthia's online. Yes, yeah. we will continue to have virtual classes. What those classes will be, I can't say. But I do want to commend you, um, you know, for being proactive, um, Bob, and your team. Uh, in putting together a survey because it will be very helpful to us when the decisions are made about uh, classes that we are going to have on site versus uh, online. So uh, to answer your question, was it Wilma? Um, we will be having both, but we don't know what classes those uh, will be at this time. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I think right. our, so, our class is so big that they yeah. don't have a room big enough for us. No. Well, that's the other thing you got to keep in mind. Uh, uh, due to social distancing mandates that we have, uh, only so many people will be allowed in each of the rooms. You all use the sewing room, the room next to the sewing room? Across yeah. from A124. Was A124, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I want to say, I don't, don't quote me on this, but I want to say maybe uh, 15 to start or something like that, which doesn't even cover almost half of your class. So, yeah, sure. so uh, again, we have to be mindful of six feet distancing and making sure that, so your class, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. yeah we can just use that. the victory room. No, we had problems with that <laughs> before the pandemic. We had problems with size, so yes. But it'll probably do so like you, when we go to church, you have to sign up. You're right, register. Uh, maybe <laughs> All right. Well, what I have to try to do is fashion something. It may not be next week, but there's something going forward. I'll try to fashion a survey mm -hmm. that will answer questions, and you just kind of pick and choose and try to put the pull the data together or some type of way. And see what it says. And then offer that to Lou Morgan. And, and let Sounds like a plan. Sounds out, good. That's great. All right, people. I'm out of words. It's Friday afternoon, and that is strange, boy. You out of words. Oh, <laughs> it happens no. all the time. No. Felix, Felix, it would be never out of words. Felix, it would be strange if you were out of words. <laughs> no, no, no. That was worse than me. He can't say that again, Diane. <laughs> We need Bob to keep on age. <laughs> That's what would be strange. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, well, have a good uh, weekend, and uh, I'll see you next week. Uh, All right. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. one. Okay. Have a good weekend, everybody. And bye. please, bye. whatever you say, have a good have weekend. A good weekend. Okay. All right, okay. uh, take care, people. Talk bye to you bye. soon.